Cheers from Japan, I'm the Tokyo Toy Bastard, and today we're going to be taking a look at some extremely rare Dragon Ball bootlegs from Korea. Yay! Let's talk about this big box bootleg beast first. Uh, barely fits on camera, that's a lot of bees. Uh, before we dive straight into this and look at this box in detail, I want to give a shout out to Tony from Retro World Korea. He is the man that always hooks me up with these awesome uh, bootlegs from Korea. Uh, normally he, he's able to come out here to Japan and uh, do some trades with me, but uh, due to the current uh, situation with the pandemic, uh, I'm even lucky that he was even able to ship this to me. It, um, so yeah, definitely check out Retro World Korea uh, and his web shop. He's always got awesome bootlegs, keshi, random weird retro stuff from Korea and Japan. And uh, currently he's unable to ship to the US, I believe, but that hopefully will end soon. But I'm glad he was able to ship to Japan because he sent me some real beauties and we're going to take a look at them today. Let's start with this one and get a closer look at the box. Okay, I cannot read Korean, uh, but I'm assuming this says something related to Dragon Ball, but who knows. If you can read Korean, let me know in the comments what this translates to. Steven, can you help me out? Also, we have the word Dragon Ball. Uh, Ball, B-O-L-L, -L, not B-A-L-L. -L. Uh, I see Dragon spelled D-O-R-A-G-O-N a lot in Japan. I think that's just because of the Japanese phonetics, Dol Dragon Ball. But this is from Korea. Uh, I'm assuming that this was produced around the early 90s just due to what's on the box. Um, you will see that we have uh, a few different figures in here. So we've got this, uh, we've got this giant Goku, uh, Kid Goku. We will talk, we will open to take a look at these in a second. Let's take a look first. You've also got these nice um, little, little window panels. You've got a Goku in here. You've got this uh, lovely artwork of Goku, obviously original, <laughs> uh, very cool. Um, and you've got this uh, Super Saiyan version, and also probably the best artwork on this entire box is is this guy right here. Just just look at that guy, just look at that. I love how they've like airbrushed his muscles, uh, but there's like no like some detail, but there's no detail in his hair. It's just flat. I love it. Um, Definitely need to try to if if you didn't already scan this uh, Tony and make this into a t-shirt uh, I will try to see what I can do, but um, yeah, also it, yeah Tony does also have um, some t-shirts of some really weird uh, Korean box art and things so you should definitely check out his uh, web his web shop for that kind of stuff, too um, I will leave a link at the at the end or well, I'll leave a link, link in the description so check out after the video of course uh, let's see, we got down here, we got another logo uh, with a Z in the middle. It's different from the top, so I guess that's implying Z. Because this is a mishmash of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And then down here at the bottom, we've got uh, Kid Goku with one arm. I assume the other arm is hiding behind him. And we've got uh, Krillin in a white, in a white uh, gi. And some other window things, and there's a little Krillin. And with some other items inside, which we will take a look at once we open it. This product was made by Cosmos Toys. Um, don't know anything about Cosmos Toys, but yeah. Let's flip this box around. Look at the top. So you've got a lot of the same art and stuff repeated there. All the way around, same thing. Yeah, more of the same. Is there any dates written on here? Ah, uh, yes, we do have a date right here. I was pretty close. 1993 was when this box set was released. And then on the back, we've got all of those pieces of art uh, in glorious, glorious, um, what's what's the deal, what's the word? Glorious big size? Man, my English is failing. Okay, let's open it up. All right, we've got a, a very old plastic tray. It's here we've got to slide out very carefully without damaging it. This is a rather rare item. Come on. There we go. Ooh, look inside. What we got? Okay, put the box to the side here. And here we have the contents. Glorious. All right, let's take a look at each, uh, each item in here individually. And a little close up. What 
the fuck is this? A croquet mallet? Okay, here we have the big kid Goku out of the box. And um, he's really nice, actually. This is a really cool figure. Uh, he's, he's actually much bigger than I expected he was going to be when I originally saw him in the pictures. Um, and he is made out of a very cheap, uh, soft vinyl, soft would be, uh, type material. Um, and you can see he's hollow with his little butthole there. Uh, he's got, you know, your standard limited soft would be art articulation at, uh, the arms, head, legs. Not like you're buying this for articulation or if you're even ever going to be able to find one of these. I highly doubt it. But, you know, this is, this video is so that you can see it for yourself. Uh, he's got his dumbbell. I'm not going to try to stick anything in here and break him, but he's got his dumbbell. He can pump some iron. Pump some iron! Um, he's got his, he's got his, <laughs> this should be where his power pole would go, but let's take a look at this real quick. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, so you've got, like, the case, like, the, sh the what do you call it? Like, not a scabbard. Well, anyway, the, the case, like, the encasement of his, his pole. It's even got, like, a little kanji or something there. It's got this really cheap, like, plastic uh, strap, and then, yeah, it's like, literally like a mallet. Goku and his, his power mallet. So that's very interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess you could swing that around on his, on his arm there. And, uh, well, that didn't last very long. Okay, and, uh, it's not broken, it's just, I guess you're supposed to tie this to him. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave that away like that. Uh, he also has a real, uh, a real fabric belt, which is a nice little touch. It looks cool. I like when a figure has like a, a fabric belt or a fabric cape or something like that. So that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, like the paint apps on this are actually pretty good for being a bootleg. I can't say the same for the other ones that were in this set, but yeah, this set is uh, pretty, pretty cool, especially for this guy right here. I don't think he's based on any other... Uh, Dragon Ball figure per se. I could be wrong. He reminds me. He looks very similar to some that I have But he's not exactly the same. So uh, if you know the figure, I mean I could just be absent-minded right now If you know a figure that this is based on or you think it's based on uh, let me know in the comments um, One other thing I want to point out too. He does have uh, the little logo here, but this is not uh, the Kame Logo, I mean it looks similar to it, but it's like it's got some it's got some things going on with it like it's it's like it's it's the Kame logo with some extra things going on. I don't even know if it actually says anything. I don't even know if that's a real kanji. Let me know in the comments. I could just ask my wife, but she's not here. And then uh, on the back, I'm also I would have to blow dry this uh, to a attach it properly. This is his tail, and his tail actually is like really nice. This is really cool. This is really like retro and awesome looking. Like this is something that I would. I this is definitely something more like out of the '80s than out of the. Uh, Oh, nearly mid 90s so this is really cool i would like to uh see some more of something like this out um that i wish they would have produced more stuff like this especially with like this cool thick chunky tail it's so awesome but yeah uh with if you're not familiar with soft vinyl toys like in order to not break that you need to blow dry this and stick it in which i'm not going to do that um, i'm going to leave them in the box displayed for the moment so yeah that's this guy and uh, let's take a look at the other dudes up next in the set, we have this little tiny Krillin. Look how tiny he is. And look how big he, or well, how big, how tiny he is compared to this Goku. This Goku could literally just like step over him. See you, Goku. Yeah, it's a nice little bonus. Like, uh, it's almost like one of those little finger puppet type deals. But yeah, this is cute. This is also cool. Nice little bonus. Uh, gotta love some little angry young Krillin. If you've never watched Dragon Ball, like, you've only seen Dragon Ball Z and Super, go watch Dragon Ball. You're not a real Dragon Ball fan unless you watch Dragon Ball. Seriously, dude. Don't try to argue with me in the comments either. I will destroy you. All right, let's look at the last two figures in this set. Um, and I actually have an interesting comparison to do uh, with these guys. So let's take a quick look at them real quick. Up first, we've got Super Saiyan Goku. Let's adjust the camera. Super Saiyan Goku, we're going to call him Goku. Um, and these were actually based off of, uh, uh, I believe it was a Yutaka set. It might have been, what was it, Hardy Robin? It might have been a Hardy Robin slash Yutaka slash Epoch. It was one of those like three like like kind of cheapo companies that kind of worked with uh, 
uh, Bandai back in the day. All, actually, Epoch was his own thing, but like Yutaka and Hardy Robin, like they they worked with Bandai and released like really cheap toys, like soft Fabian and things. So this was a uh, this was an official release originally. It came in a two pack with uh, with this one, um, but these are obviously bootlegs. Uh, I do have an official version of this, so we're going to compare it in a second. But let's real quick, let's take a look at these guys. So yeah, so. Um, these, the original ones of these were actually made in Korea, so they just took the molds and made these uh, bootleg versions of them. They're pretty similar in size and things and color. So uh, let's just take a quick look at uh, the back. The paint, the paint's not too bad on this guy, but his face is, his face kind of scary. Also, why does he have black eyebrows and black eyes? He should have yellow eyebrows and blue eyes or green eyes. And then on his foot, um, not sure how well that's going to come off. Yeah, you can see it. It says Korea. And it has, uh, I think, what was Japan here. And then it has the official, like, uh, BSFT. This is this basically just ripped straight from the original mold. So this is not official in any way or capacity. And then over here, you've got the base form Goku, which unfortunately had a bit of some paint errors in the factory. So he looks like he's been... Uh, you know, maybe he's just been painting, practicing his kanji. And, uh, yeah, there's that guy. And he's got the same thing going on his feet there. Let's take a look at him next to a legit version. Okay, and all right, we... Okay, and all right. Okay, and all right. We have... <laughs> Alrighty. We have the bootleg. The bootleg right here, obviously. And this is a legit release. Let's take a look at the differences here. Let's get close on the face. So you can see that the uh, the color on the skin and the paint apps on the legit version are um, are a bit different. Uh, although not that different. Like the paint apps themselves are not too much different. The eyes on this one are painted a little bit better, and uh, but the, the the skin tone is a bit different. Obviously. The paint on this one is all over the place. But yeah, this one's just cleaner looking. But yeah, you can tell it's identical sculpt. And they use the exact same mold. Like they didn't like rip a mold. They didn't like rip a figure from a mold and then make a new mold. Like they, they use the exact same mold. You can tell because the details on both are pretty much the same. There's no softness on the other. Um, and w we can tell that more when we look at the feet, which I will go get to in just a second. On the back, uh, yeah, same thing, like almost identical, just the paint looks a little different. Um, the seams and everything are all the same, just a little bit different color plastic or vinyl, soft vinyl. These are also soft vinyl too, I failed to mention that. And one major difference you can tell about these guys other than just a slight color is that this one has darker blue uh, boots with no paint and this one has lighter blue boots with uh, orange, uh, sorry, orange, geez, uh, gold paint. So yeah, that's a, another major difference there. Um, and then if you look at the feet, obviously they're different colors, but you can see that they have the same stamps and they're almost identical. So you could tell that they use the same mold for these. Uh, although you can tell that this one, the, the, uh, the N is not as pronounced, the M N is not as pronounced on the, on the Japan as it is on here. So yeah, that's what you get when you try to make uh, cheap toys in Korea in the eighties and nineties. You just, the company just stabs you in the back and just cranks out some of their own and releases them in country. So I, I forgot to point out that Utaka and Bandai and all these other companies, a lot of their stuff was made in in Korea, but they were sold uh, in, in Japan. So yeah, just want to clarify that. these were The legit versions were not made to be for sale in Korea. They were made to be for sale in Japan. So I don't, I don't blame the Korean manufacturers with Cosmo Toys for putting out their own their own versions if they had, they had the, uh, the mold on hand. So yeah, anyway, that's these guys. I'm going to stop rambling about them. Uh, let's go to the next set we have to look at. And here's the next set we're going to be taking a look at. Uh, I'm having to hold the camera this time because this one's even wider than the other one was. So let's take a quick little pan across here. So over here we got some, uh, we got like a wallet or a little pass holder. And we've got some cards, some various cards, colorful cards, and some little display. We got uh, Super Saiyan Goku, officially, not officially licensed, but officially stolen artwork. You know, they didn't try to draw their own Goku. Um, and then over here we've got logo, Vegeta, 
and over here super saiyan dragon ball z before we look at the figures themselves because i don't want to spoil those too much uh we can see that this was produced by hosanna toys so and you've got some numbers there and blah 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 okay now let's look at the toys <laughs> Actually, let's take a quick look at the back. There's the back. And here is the blister card with all of the figures and items taken up. Actually, a really nice blister card on the front. I love all the artwork on here. Just take it in. Hmm. Ah. Let's look at the figures. Okay, I lied. Let's take a look at the random other junk that was inside. Here's the uh, wallet pass thing. Um, and it's got a card stuck inside. I guess you could take this out and put any card you want inside. I'm definitely going to keep all my cash in here from now on. So, yeah. And here is the little display for all the other cards that it came with. And, um, it's kind of cool. Very colorful. Very early 90s. Very, very early 90s looking. And on this side we have, uh, this picture. With actually some really nice art. You know what? That's some really nice art. I'm really liking this set. I like it. I like it a lot. Also, check it out. It came with uh, a little, like a little guide of other products that they've released. So like, this is a legit toy company. I'm wondering if these are legit figures, but I don't think so. Cause look at all the other stuff they have on here. They've got all these like little baby kids, baby kids, baby humans. What do they call those? Oh yeah, small children. Small children toys. And uh, then they've got some like, uh, some things like based on like Kamen Rider and some Sentai stuff. Not hentai, Sentai. Uh, Space Police. Is this Thundercats? No, nope, that's that's Kamen Rider. I thought it was Thundercat Sword. Uh, whatever that guy is. I, I'm not that familiar with all this stuff. Uh, some Power Ranger-y looking guys. They've got a bunch of really cool little sets. And then this one. I want this one so bad. I want that Michael, little Michael Keaton Batman mask and all that little stuff that comes with that. I love Michael Keaton Batman. I actually have some stuff coming from Tony at Retro World Korea. Uh, Korean Batman stuff coming. Uh, so I'm going to do a video on that as well. Because I've also got some weird Japanese Batman stuff. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. See ya. Figures. All right, now we have these three glorious figures out of the blister. Uh, for review, let's take a look at them. We've got Son Goku. What the fuck? And Egghead Vegeta. Bask. Okay, you can stop basking. All right, um, let's take a look at Goku. This is Goku. He's orange. He's awesome, and his head isn't exploded like the others, so he's my favorite. I also know something about this, that uh, someone that reviewed this set on YouTube not too long ago, maybe a year or two, a guy named uh, Phelous, um, I watch, he, he does like bootleg reviews and weird VHS movie reviews, uh, Phelon Porteous, something like that, Phelon Porteous, uh, Canadian fella. Does lots of bootleg reviews. He reviewed this set, uh, but he did not know what these were bootlegs of. So we're going to compare these to the legit Japanese releases, all three of them. So let's first take a look at these guys, and then we will compare. Just wanted to let you know. You know I don't script shit in this channel. Uh, let's look at Vegeta's here. Yeah, he's got a cracked head. Um, I actually tried to repair this. Uh, I thought a little glue would do it. And when I stuck the glue on, it immediately uh, dissolved the black around his hair. And then it just made it goopy and it wouldn't stick at all. So whatever this is made out of is highly, highly toxic and does not work with other chemicals. So, yeah. Anyway, he's not completely destroyed, so he's awesome. Uh, yeah, there you go. And as you can see inside of his head that this is a hollow, soft vinyl material. Stand up, Vegeta. No, poor Piccolo. Poor, poor Piccolo. Poor, poor, poor Piccolo. His face has been smashed. 
I don't think he can regenerate his face like he can his arms. I like to see him try. Wow, straight through. Hi, Goku. Um, the rest of them is fine. The rest of them looks great. Now let's uh, let's take a look at these next to their legit counterparts one by one. Look, legit ones in a big box that's too big to show. Actually, if you want to see like more information about this, all this stuff, this, all this stuff. Wow, I can't talk. Continue. If you want to see more about this line, you need to watch my entire review of uh, Dragon Ball Z Yutaka figures. Because yes, this is another Yutaka set, which I believe I failed to mention uh, when I mentioned these the, the three very busted figures, that they are bootlegs of a Yutaka line, which you can see right here. And in this, uh, this line right here, this specific box, uh, this is a two-pack box that also has, um, let me move the camera, some Keshi and stuff inside, but we're not going to be talking about Keshi. We're just going to be talking about these two figures. And I really don't want to open it up to compare them. So um, I actually have a loose Goku on standby. But real quick, I wanted to just show you what they look like side by side next to the box here. So there we go. Um, Piccolo, you look much better with a face. You'll also notice that the original Legit Piccolo has a vinyl white cape. But I don't want to take these guys out because I actually have a loose one of this and I don't really want to mess up Piccolo's vinyl cape. I don't want to rip it. I would cry. And do you really need to compare his face to this? It's going to be kind of hard to compare. So, uh, yeah. Let's take out the loose version of this. Okay, now you can see the legit version right here next to the bootleg version right here. So I would like to point out that the legit version is a very solid, heavy, uh, rubbery plastic that has joints at the knees. Um, it, the legs are articulated. It has joints at the elbows. Uh, the arms are a little bit more articulated there. They swivel and its head can also swivel. So yeah, it's actually rather heavy and uh, bulky and um, and flexible for what it is. All right, the paint job is not the best. I did talk about the paint jobs on these cheap Yutaka figures in my Yutaka, uh, Yutaka Dragon Ball Z uh, video. And you can see on the back, like, it's very cheap, you know, no paint on the back as far as this stuff goes. They didn't even finish painting his neck and uh, no paint on the logo there. So, but yeah, there's that figure. And then on this one, the soft vinyl bootleg, uh, you got your your standard, you know, vinyl articulation. I mean, you're not buying vinyl for articulation. The legs, he's got a hip, he's got a hip, kind of a kind of a swivel. His head turns. That's good. Anyway, this is not an articulation comparison. This is basically I just want to show how different they are. You can see that they use the same mold, uh, but it's been shrunken down and mutated. But they've like used, like here, like the Utaka was so too lazy to paint the orange. Uh, out of his sleeves there because that should be his arm but on this version um, they could have left that but uh, no they didn't they used they used orange vinyl and just painted the bottom parts of his arms on they, like they copied it completely they could have just given him uh, flesh colored uh, vinyl for the arms because like the head the, I think that no the head looks like it's painted too I can't tell if the head's painted um, with a different color or not because they could have done the same thing with that because it does look like the arm doesn't look as glossy as the face paint anyway let's look at the faces like you still got that same the same fine craftsman craftsmanship on that paint uh, this one looks a little more swollen in the face also on the the Phelan Phelan review he was he compared this uh, figure to like some crappy early 2000s Goku and said that that one looked more accurate. No, that figure is fucking terrible. Why would you compare it to that? At least compare it to like a semi-decent figure. Anyway, I love these. They're charming. And the fact that there's a soft vinyl version and I love retro looking soft vinyl. This is amazing. I didn't buy this because it was hokey and, and cheap looking. It is hokey, hokey and cheap looking. That's because the actual line is hokey and cheap looking. But I love them and I, I have a bunch of them. But the fact that they made this kind of cool, like, 70s, 1970s soft vinyl style uh, in the early 90s of, of that figure line is really cool. 
And it's a shame that the other three have exploded faces. Let's look at those, shall we? So here is a legit box version of the Utaka uh, base form Vegeta next to the bootleg. You'll notice that the armor is a different color, but there are actually gold and silver variants of the armor. I've even seen some of them mis mismatched where the back half is silver and the front half is gold. Let's take them out and get a comparison. Also, look at that tray. It's a little, a little too much, don't you think? A little too much space for his hair. It's not, uh, doesn't have an afro. Also, just look at these rinky-dink legs. I mean, I talked about this. I compared him to the other figures in size uh, in my Utaka video. So, yeah, we're not gonna talk about that, but yeah, just look at them. Look at them. They're perfect, identical twins. Um, I think these shoulder pads, I don't wanna break this. Gosh, I don't wanna break this. Okay, I'm not gonna break it. Um, you'll notice that the uh, armor on the legit version is actually, like, it's not molded on. Like, you could take it off. It's, uh, it's, um, it's removable. Even the, the side part have little flaps here that can be taken off. And he's got the same articula articulation. He's got the swivel and the bends and uh, his knees bend, etc, etc, his head turns. Whereas this one, all the armor has been molded into the figure as soft final, which, like, that's cool. It's soft final. Um, and, uh, yeah, so same thing going on. But uh, just, uh, let's take a look at the face, because that's the main thing I want to talk about. Um, I... I uh, don't know what to say about this face. I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah. It is such a shame that he's got that crack in his head, though. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations of, like, the best uh, adhesive or glue to use for, like, really shitty, old, brittle, toxic plastic, let me know. And I'll try to fix it back up and paint his head. I was going to uh, do a Vegeta impression and say something in his voice about his head, but I decided not to because I'm not very good at impressions. Also, look at that. They, they, why did they paint a mullet onto the back of his neck? The other one, they didn't even bother to paint the back of Goku's neck. Is this is this black plastic that's been painted what uh, skin color? I don't know. The mysteries of Utaka. Anyway, next. Before we go, we have to take one more quick look at this uh, unfortunate Piccolo. Oh, man. I guess I'm going to have to seek another set of these out. I mean, these are really hard to find. Uh, the Phalus guy, I don't think he knew how rare, or maybe he did, how rare this set, wa set was. He didn't know anything about the Utaka figures, so you can check his review. Uh, he just makes fun of these guys. I mean, at least his face wasn't exploded on his Piccolo. Um, but, yeah, man. Yeah, the Utaka figures are awesome, but the fact that these were made into soft vinyl, and like the, it's not that bad, I mean, but these are obviously toxic. Uh, when I tried to fix the Vegeta's hair, like, the paint rubbed off of my finger, it was, and super glue got on my finger with paint, and it didn't wash off for several days. Uh, and it was, I was worried that I was gonna not wake up in the morning. So, anyway, there's, uh, there's Piccolo, one more time for you. You know, I can't get enough of this piccolo. So I did have an idea of something to, to do with this. Uh, to, you know, not, not to let it go to waste because this head is a separate piece. So technically I could remove it. And um, later if I found a, another one that was loose and had a better face and a damaged body, I could swap them out or something like that. So, you know, I don't want to throw this in the garbage. But uh, I did want to do something with it real quick before uh, before we end this video. So uh, let's, let's, let's do that. Bye-bye, piccolo. You know what I'm going to do, right?